I had a few people inquire about the clutch housings, you know, when unfortunately when water gets into the drive system, it could easily rust the bearing, which is that. Um, commonly, I would replace these, but I'm not doing that anymore simply because, you know, if it's neglect by the user or just lack of maintenance, guys, it's just a simple process of correcting it. So what I've done, I'm showing you more or less what happens, all right? This is the internal structure of really what drives the system. This is the bell housing that the clutch will actually, you know, engage to. And what happens is this is the culprit. This is your bearing that sits inside that basically sits like that inside of your clutch housing. So what happens right here, the roller bearings inside of here, well, they rust. And that happens because water gets in between the seal right here, right? It gets in between the seal from waves, or whatever the case may be. Now, the longer systems don't commonly have that problem. It's the Hobies, the ones that get really close to the water. Or if you're running a pontoon system and you get water right in here over time, it's going to make its way in and down. And, of course, if you look in there, there's your bearing. So it sits literally right on that lip, and it's going to get underneath it. So what I will do from now on is offer a service of simply replacing it for you and throwing a stainless bearing in, which is going to be a lot better overall. It's a really high quality stainless bearing. It will be greased on top as well. So imagine this sits like this, and then on top of that is going to be greased. So, you know, it's going to lessen the chance of it having to lock up over time. And it usually it doesn't happen to any of them except the ones that obviously get water in them and the owner does not take it apart. So what I've done on my new builds now is that little lip that you guys see right here that goes around where the motor connects to it is I put an RTV seal on this now. So if water happens again in between that, it, that seal is going to just kick it out. There's no other way water is going to get down there unless you get water literally through the engine into the holes there that you see that guide itself into the bearing, which look like that. Right? So if it gets down there and course gets under the bearing well it's going to have a problem and that is due to lack of maintenance so this is the best thing i can offer you guys there is a circlip here and there's also one in here so i'll take this one apart i'm going to swap this one and keep this one as a backup um, even though this one works perfectly fine i'll show you guys what it looks like at some point um won't do it today, but I'll definitely make sure when I have the first one that uh, I do have spare bell housings in case they're rusted, which they shouldn't be, but you never know. People don't maintain anything. They just run them, run them, run them, and they don't want to do maintenance. This is what happens. So nonetheless, when I have the first one that I need to do, then I'll go ahead and swap it out. But stainless bearings, bell housings I have now as, as spares, and um, hopefully I won't run, won't run across too many of these, but uh, nonetheless, that's the culprit so if you have a machine that has a locked drive system it is not your gearbox it is simply that bearing right there locking the clutch housing so if that doesn't spin your gearbox is not going to spin i've never seen a gearbox lock because those are full of gear even if you put water in a gearbox it's not and you let it sit with the oil in there it's not going to lock it okay it's this bearing this roller bearing here locks simple fix over time just got to make sure you have the right tools. It took three iterations of long nose, long reach, internal and external circlip removers to get this thing to work, and it does now. So there you go. There's your bearing. Again, the grease should be done internally on that. Same thing back here. There's a clip that needs to come out. This gets knocked out, and that gets replaced. It's that simple. I would take it apart, but I guess it is kind of meaningless to just take one apart for the fun of it. But anyway, it's a good one. So that's it, guys. Stainless bearings. And if you have a machine that was either built by me, you built it, or someone it was bought via somewhere else, easily correctable. I offer the service now to change these out with a stainless, okay, for 75 bucks. Not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you, if you don't want to do it, not a hard process to do it, but definitely need uh, the tools and you need the bearings. And you may need a clutch bell. So regardless, that's where the deal is. Okay, so simple stuff. I forgot to mention also, uh, for the people that want to do that, at, you know, at home, if you want to correct your clutch housing, you need one of these bad boys. This is what they call an arbor press. This allows the clutch housings to go to fit in there, and you can press the bearing in and out. Makes it a lot easier. I mean, granted, I will tell you I used this with a hammer first time I did it. 
Um, yes, it worked, but it wasn't pretty. Um, still could do that, but nonetheless, the Arbor Press works great. I know you wouldn't want to buy one just to change a bearing, but I'm just letting you know that makes it much easier. Puts the bearing in nice and straight, and there's no issue with the torquing of your arms or anything like that. It works right off the bat, so there you go.